Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Sorry we're late. We're always late. Well, not always late, but we always have technical problems, and that's what we had today. So, but we got through them, and it threw us off by 15 minutes. Sorry about that. It happens sometimes. It happens. Can't help the, the, the technical issues. At least I got a couple guys here that can help me, so it worked out great. Uh, today's April 17th. Today is the 31st anniversary of my first day at Disney as an employee. It was on this day, April 17th in 1989, that I first stepped through the doors as a Disney employee in Walt Disney Feature Animation and started my animation career. And what did that feel like, while, like walking through those doors as an official animator for the first time? It was pretty darn cool. I had done my internship the year before, but I wasn't an official employee. And then I got hired and went back to college, finished out my time at college, and started working April 17th, 1989. Um, and that's when I knew, you now this is the start of my new life, my new career. It must have felt like a, like a rock star or like a, uh, or like a Top Gun pilot or something. It was Just pretty cool. And then a year and a, a, year and a half later, you came along. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> bouncing <Aww>. baby boy. <laughs> now you're a bouncing huge Sasquatch. Yeah, I'm your, I'm your twin. <laughs> see? Yes. See, see, see the resemblance? Yes. <laughs> So we're going to do request day today because um, I was sitting here thinking about what we were going to draw today and I couldn't. And so I always, when I can't come up with an idea, I love to throw it back at you guys and you have to give me the idea. Um, but in, before that, uh, I just want to remind you that we have the biggest sale going on we've ever had in the history of our business, uh, you know, in response of to all this, the quarantining, which has just become routine now. I don't even talk about it anymore. We just don't go anywhere. We've changed our habits. I've saved thousands in restaurant bills <laughs> because we just can't go to restaurants anymore. Um, uh, but because of that, um, we and, and we know you know a lot of you know we're up to twenty million people. I think twenty two million people here in the United States are out of work, um, and it's going to be a global uh, issue like that. And so. Nick and I talked about this earlier in the month and just decided to drop the prices of everything drastically, even making some of the courses free. So like the animation course is free and then everything else is dropped down to a dollar or it's 45% off or whatever. Um, but go over to creatureartteacher.com. That can. You got it? Oh yeah, I've, it's been on. Awesome. <laughs> like go over to creatureartteacher.com and just explore it. You'll, you'll see all kinds of different things that are uh, for sale and because uh, we want to do our part and like I said I, you know the last time I did this uh, did the live stream on Monday or Tuesday I uh, I just want to make sure that we're going into this uh, coming out of this stronger than we did coming going in um, if you don't come out of this having learned a new language or learned some art or built a shed or something your excuse was never you didn't have enough time that was never the excuse, okay? <laughs> I've got an entirely new backyard now. Entirely new backyard. It's completely new backyard. <laughs> new buildings, new decks, <laughs> new paintings. Anyway, um, so anyway, go over to creatureartteacher.com and just check out all of the, you know, the great stuff that we got going on over there. Um, it's you're gonna. We had someone that, that mentioned, I just went over to creature art teacher and I spent six dollars and now I just got six courses <laughs> for six bucks <laughs> I'm telling you it's crazy crazy good deals right now so it's insane um, it's like a semester's worth of stuff for ten bucks um, and then uh, uh, oh we did our live event last Saturday that was cool oh yeah yeah that was really cool uh, we had a lot of had a lot of fun and uh, we'll be doing another one soon uh, that one was all animation. It was all an introduction to animation. Uh, already, we're getting some uh, we're getting some requests. A twi Twitch question: Can you make a dinosaur? Can you make a dragon? Can you draw an orca? Ah, yeah, we've already had a couple of, over here as well. One, one I'm interested in is a eagle dragon hybrid. An eagle, eagle and dragon hybrid. Done. I like that one. Eagle done. and dragon. The eagle dragon hybrid. And we're it fits rather it. well with the current project we're working yes, on. Yes, because I'm uh, currently. Uh, working on my uh, uh, birds of prey. Birds of prey course. One of the things, if you guys know my animal courses, you'll know that I always have skulls and everything as part of the course. 
I can't get any skulls delivered for this because the company that I use in California, they're under stay at home rules. So no skulls Damn. for this course. But I'll be able to draw them. I'll draw them and we'll do the same thing that we always did before. But uh, as usual, I got me trusty dusty Dustin over here. What's up, guys? With less Hi. hair. Yes, much a lot less hair. Cleaned up face. We're, we're, we're practically twins right now. Yeah. I, I even had the I'm, same. I know. I'm just a little whiter down here. <laughs> just a little, and a little, little gray. A little more wrinkly. <laughs> and then we got Nick over in Sarasota, and he's going to be manning the booth over there as well and answering questions and helping helping out and providing links and stuff. And uh, I've got my water. Stay hydrated. Stay thirsty, my friend. Stay thirsty, my friend. And so I hope all of you are staying safe and having a great week, um, or as great as it can be. And uh, uh, and just know that we're we're here with you. We're doing the same thing. If you've lost your job, know that you know we're thinking about you, and we hope the best for you, and and all of that. And so hopefully, in this next hour and a half or so, or two hours, I can take your mind off of it a little bit, and we can have some fun. With that being said, let's do a dragon eagle. An e or eagle dragon? Eagle dragon. I really like that idea. I like big, bold. You know, one of the cool... Uh, there's a really cool uh, bird of prey called the stellar sea eagle, which is just a massive, massive uh, bird. Angela uh, noticed my shirt. Says <laughs> like I like your shirt. Thank you very much, Angela. It's my it's the um, uh, Bob Ross uh, shirt. Oh yeah. So I'm just I'm just kind of fiddling around right now. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. Uh, some. Folks saying howdy from Texas. Got so Thanks. Thanks. Saying hi. Regards from Italy. I hope you guys are doing well there in Italy. We're still we're thinking about you. Hope you're well. That brow, that, that ridge right here. That's the orbital ridge. And uh, Maharshi. Uh, says your wolf course is awesome i'm thoroughly enjoying it thanks for the discounted price cheers you are welcome i'm glad you're enjoying it yeah a few a few more folks saying hello from belgium from spain wow all over the place so here i'm just thinking about you know opening his mouth What if we do this? I might try something. A something here. <laughs> and uh, Laura says, Thanks, Aaron. I'm looking on the bright side and spending my time drawing and animating, which I never get time to do. Awesome. You have to. Got to keep yourself busy. You do. Keep yourself sane. I was thinking about. I'm trying to think of like a dragon with an eagle's head, but the but it's still scale, you know. Instead of feathers, we're gonna have some scales. I'm not sure if that's if I want that pose. Oh, that's the one he was saying hi from Santiago de Chile. Yes, I've been to Santiago twice. I love it down there. <laughs> Let's do this. Frank J. Ferrer asks, what happened to the Pokemon for Dustin? Oh, uh, that's, that'll yeah. be next week. Yeah. We'll do that next week. Joe Carson says hi from Scotland. 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 That's one of the places I would love to go to in Scotland. Uh, 
Victoria uh, Bozik asks, hello, uh, do you sell any Procreate brushes? If not, any plans to, to do that in the future? Yes, we do sell Procreate brushes. Well, we've got, what we've got is our Photoshop brushes um, that most of them work pretty well right out of the right off the bat in the Procreate. Some of them, some of the others, uh, others need some tweaking. Um, you just got to take them into the into the control panel and play around with it to see if you can get it to work. Uh, right now, the brushes are all a dollar, so you can try them out and see what you think. Are there any uh, plans so, in the future but, to? Uh, yeah, we'll probably do for for actual Procreate brushes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably get more specified in the future. And I think for the brushes that we currently have on on sale that can can work on Procreate, I think uh, it would be nice to, sh to have like instructions on how to yeah, bring them over. It's a good idea. Nick, um, what do you think? When uh, when you're designing hybrid creatures, this is a YouTube question. When you're designing hybrid creatures, how do you think about combining anatomy during during the sketch, well, I think about I think about what I already know about the anatomy, and then I think about how how we might combine it, right? And so, and, and plus, I got I want to think about the pose like here. I've got this pose that I want to I want to have this. This is where I want the dragon part of it coming in. And uh, Peter, uh, and I, hold on, real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, not, that's all right. And so I start thinking about the anatomy that I already know on whatever animal that I'm doing, and and just how how might they mix, and then I try to think of the logic, you know, of of the, of uh, how those bones and muscles and everything would kind of reform. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. No worries. Um, Peter says uh, you could always reference uh, feathered dinosaurs. It's scientifically based. Uh, it's a scientifically based take on the griffin. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, Izzy Bo, is it Izzy or Izzy? And, and, anyways, uh, she asks, "I need to learn more cartoony humanoid anatomy style. Uh, do you have any courses on that?" Uh, yes, we have a, a course on drawing cartoon animals and, and, car and drawing cartoon humans. By Tim Hodge, my good friend Tim Hodge, who is also a Disney animator, story artist, uh, all-around good guy. Yes, I mean we we both cut our hair because we were bored. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got a few more people saying hello from different countries. We have one saying hello from Colombia, from Germany. Hello, hello, hello. From UK. And uh, actually, two people from Germany, and uh, and so I say hello from Minnesota. Minnesota. Min Minnesota. <laughs> and uh, Dana suggests to uh, give the eagle some scales or horns. That's what I'm doing. Which is exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Which is pretty freaking cool. That's pretty cool, dear bud. Thanks, bud. Right off the brow. That's why he's saying hello from Japan. Hello. Hello. A thunderstorm dragon bird. <laughs> Have some lightning coming off from the uh, from the tips and the horns. Yeah. Feeling inspired right now. This is gonna be. This is gonna be fun. Carlotta says, uh, hi, Aaron, and bye from Italy. I love every one of your drawings. Thank you. I'm saying hi from Wales, UK. What's the secret to making a pose look natural? It, it, the secret is really understanding the anatomy and understanding weight and how that anatomy adjusts to the weight. Um, things like that. Uh, um, understanding, you know, like in this pose right here, I have this, I understand the anatomy underneath, and so I'm, uh, I'm twisting them in a way that's actually doable. 
the bird can actually twist this way. And so therefore, it's going to feel a bit more natural. Zoe says, uh, bonjour from France. Uh, thank bonjour. you for this amazing course and taking time to share that with us. You are welcome. And also, uh, so we're saying hello from Serbia. Very nice place. And uh, Khan says, thank you so much for the discounts. Uh, purchased a couple courses and most of your Photoshop brushes yesterday. I don't have Photoshop, but they were super easy to import into Procreate. And I can't wait to try them. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Christina um, McKay says, uh, question, uh, loving all your videos and courses and uh, having a couple of questions here. Um, how do you block in shapes for sketching and, in, and uh, ignoring details when sketching first pass, rough line drawing? And, I, and how do you build up volume uh, mm -hmm. My drawings look flat, and I really struggle with uh, foreshortening and perspectives. Well, Thanks. those are things that, yeah, you're, ju you're just going to struggle with them and uh, until you just do them more. you got to do it a lot, and it's, uh, it's something that just takes time. And uh, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Uh, I know it sounds like a canned answer, but it's really the best one I can give you. Like, the more you see, the more you do it, the more you see what it need, needs... Um, needs fixing over time. Yes. Yeah, a lot of times, um, well sometimes, not all the time, but um, it's the ability to see what's wrong with a drawing rather than the ability to draw, draw uh, right, right out of the bat. Because a lot of times, it's, you know, I'll struggle with an angle on something. And uh, let's see here. I want to get a little bit more of the bird. Well, not the bird, but the dragon. Drag dragon. The dragon. Have you guys ever thought of traveling anywhere else in Europe, like Spain? We were, t you know, exactly a year ago. Exactly a year. Well, maybe not. Yeah, about a year ago today, we were, were in Spain. Spain. <laughs> we were in Sevilla. Um, can you use your Photoshop brushes in GIMP also or in Affinity Photo? That I don't know. I don't know what either one of those are. Ben said, uh, Ben Arguada says, greetings from El Salvador, learning tons of your anatomy video course, and thanks for the huge discounts on your courses, really appreciate it. You are welcome. He's going to have extra digits, I guess. I'm going to give him extra dig digits. Extra digits? Digit, digit. Uh, Tim Short says, uh, I use his... Uh, I use the brushes in uh, Affinity Designer. Oh, cool. So I guess they can work on there. I guess they can. I gotta blow this up so people can see it a little better. I wanna show off the wings a little bit. I'm not sure I'm liking the design of the wings right now. Claudia says, hi from, from Paris. Thank Hello. You. Thank you, Aaron, and it's so, so nice each time. I'm going to knock this down to one claw. I'm going to make it smaller. One like that. There we go. That way I can get one more. Digit. Uh, Michael says, hello again. I was watching one of your earlier streams yesterday, uh, the one of uh, the Soctopus. 
And I heard Dustin say his favorite movie creature is Godzilla. Mine too. Awesome. <laughs> I was wondering if you could draw a large monster like that today. Something with a real sense of scale shown in, in the piece. Well, we could probably make this one. I'm going to make this one. Uh, we'll see how big we can make them feel. I think the between, like right between the wings, you just have a little Empire State Building, <laughs> right. like that goes like up to chest level. Uh, Twitch comment: I started following your brother on YouTube, and I'm really enjoying his videos as well. Such a talented family. He's adopted. <laughs> He's not. And there's nothing wrong with being adopted. Don't get, don't, don't get, don't start giving me a hard time because I said he was adopted. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you already thinking of color and light values at this point? Nope, I'm not. I'm actually, especially when we do these, this is what I love about doing these um, these requests. I, I don't have a clue coming into it, and so I'm, I'm just exploring. When someone said Eagle Dragon, I went, ooh! It just, as soon as it, it just struck me as something that I knew we could make really cool. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Do I want to do put a little skin between there, a little flesh. And uh, Steph uh, Verity says, uh, be safe, love your art. Thank you. And we got a couple more greetings from around the world. Philippe, uh, Philippe says hello from per Paris. Martin Berger says hello from Austria, as always. Hello. Uh, Ted Pai says hello from uh, Myanmar. Jorge says hello from Mexico. Uh, Christian says hello from Argentina. O'Neill's from Switzerland. Steph says cheers from Canada. Uh, Lucrecio says, ooh, eagle friend. <laughs> <laughs> and Vicky says hello from France. Hello, hello, and, uh, hello, everybody. It's everywhere. And Arne says hello from Venezuela. And uh, Mark... Maharshi is asking, uh, what kind of eagle are you thinking of right now? Any specific type? Yeah, I kind of had a harpy, uh, harpy-esque eagle in my head. Um, but also, I'm thinking about kind of golden eagles, bald eagles, all, you know, just to, for that shape. I'm trying to get the anatomy on this working right. It's, I'm just faking it at this point. Because this would all actually work a little differently. But that's okay. I'm just going to go with it. And Meg Bowser says uh, hello from Hamburg, Germany. Hello. And Jen says hello from Destination Kosovo. Kosovo? <laughs> And, uh, 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 Twitch question. Uh, every time I get a good idea, my sketch turns out great, but then the painting looks horrid. <laughs> I've been using local color first, and I add the multiply and overlay layers, and it just ends up looking flat, dull, and doesn't work. Any tips for coloring and painting? I have no problem when I do traditional coloring. Um, it sounds like obviously a digital issue. I do have a course uh, right now, and I think it's really cheap, on um, painting light and how to keep all of that kind of under control. Uh, that might help you. Uh, but otherwise, it's really, you know, it's looking at values, making sure your values are, are uh, in the pocket. Not just values, but also, um, you know, your, your color temperature. Warm and cool. Don't like that. I don't, don't like it. Doug Brown says, good evening from the Kingdom of Fife. Uh, hope y'all are doing good and staying safe. And you might have to buy more land so you can extend your amazing garden a bit more, Aaron. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I hope you're doing well. Is that that's Doug Brown? Doug Brown, yeah. Yeah, hey, Doug. Yeah, we've just been kind of going on a building binge in between drawing and and whatnot. I'm building squirrel uh, squirrel feeders and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. What do you think? 
What do you think of this, Dustin? I'm liking it. You digging it? I'm wondering if I need to shrink it up again. And just make it a bit bigger? Add more detail? Yeah, I'm wondering if we need to do that. Let me see here. Uh, Twitch question. Every time I get it... Oh, it says repeat. Sorry. What would it be like if, like, the tips of his wings, like the very end of the wings, has the the classic eagle feathers, but all the back end, like if like if you were to look at your arm, like this, like like these would be the feathers, but then all these would be like the standard. Like, oh, that's dragon. interesting. So it won't be just like head of an eagle and body of a dragon, but it would also be like the tips of the wings of an eagle. But the rest of the wing as the dragon. Yeah. When does the bird course come out? It's gonna it's gonna take some time. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Gonna take plenty of time. To do it. To do it, to do it, to do it, to do it, to do it right now. How intuitive or technical um, is your perspective when drawing something out of your imagination? I don't know. I, I, uh, one of the things I do to uh, make sure that I'm kind of in the right pocket is I, uh, I flop the drawing a lot. Well, Manny's here. Manny! 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 Raul Estrada um, says, question. I recently started looking into dynamic symmetry, uh, but I'm still struggling on how to apply it to my work. Um, could you give me your take on that? Um, I don't know dynamic symmetry. I don't know that term. Unfortunately. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know. Or if I do... Hold on. This thing's... This thing's, uh... Evolving. Uh, do you have reptilian brushes? I'm designing some dragons. Thank you. I don't, but that's a good, uh, that's a good suggestion. And somebody just missed the, somebody missed the beginning and it's asking, what are we doing? We are doing, someone, uh, it's request day and someone asked for a eagle dragon. Uh, do you paint over your line art? Yes. Yes, I do. What about a crest of feathers flaring out of its head like a harpy eagle? I kind of want to keep it... I, I appreciate that suggestion. Uh, but I kind of want to keep it... Um, I don't want to mess up the silhouette with the horns. Uh, YouTube question. Hello, could you please briefly talk about what it is, what is it like to direct an animated movie? I've always wondered what it takes and how exactly it it, 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 it differs from live action. Well, there's a lot that that's the same with live action, and there's a lot that's different. Obviously, a lot it comes down to process. When we're making an animated movie, we really we, it doesn't stop with script. We don't start making the movie once we have a script that we've bought off on. We, uh, we start storyboarding the movie, which isn't actually, that's kind of like a pre-production process, I think. Um, it's not a production process. Whereas in live action, once you have a script that everyone buys off on, you start shooting. And, um, and so when you do, um, that's pretty much where you're left with, what you're left with, unless you decide to do 
um, reshoots later on down the road. Well, you, you know, you do a lot of coverage and you shoot from different angles and, and then it's really made an editorial after the fact. Well, um, with animation, we storyboard first. And so it's like, it's almost like a practice run, you know, in a, in a, it's like a, 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 rehear a rehearsal with a stage play. And so we get the script to where we think we like it, but then we get to storyboard the whole thing and we cut the storyboards together and we get to watch it. And then we know, okay, well that part didn't work and this part does work and that part didn't work. And so you get, you get to kind of see how your movie looks before you actually make your movie. And that's kind of an advantage in, in making an animated film. Um, and so I don't like this composition at all. I'm gonna, I might gonna go back to tightening it up. That way I'll be able to get it done too. And so, um, that's one of the biggest differences between live action and uh, and um, animation. There we go. I'm going to go back to doing that again. Going back to the original, my original uh, idea. Just was it just getting too busy. Yeah, we're getting too much, too much stuff. And the twelfth is here. Says awesome. Awesome to be here again. <laughs> How you doing, man? And then the other thing too that's really great about animating a, a you know or directing an animated movie is just the um, the ability to be involved in you know all, so many different aspects of the filmmaking process, um, from design, um, you know, character design, art direction, writing, animation, all of it. I just love all of that. I gotta blow this up so you can see it. I'll just go with that because I think that it's gonna take enough time just to do that. Are ready for a question or a comment? Yes. Uh, Simon says, "Hi, Aaron. Thank you for your light course. It is great. And I'm having lots of fun following you along." And Dustin, love your voice performance of Arnold saying, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> I'd love to animate it. There you go. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> uh, what color are we going for here? I don't know. What color should we go for? Tell me. Talk to me, people. What color should we go for? It, Angela Martinez uh, asks, what would the wings look like? If you kept the wings bat-like, but brought in primary and secondary coverts over them. That's a good idea. Oh, somebody said, uh, blue, blue's cool. Uh, white, gold, and, uh, white, gold, and blue, says, uh, Kendra Wilford. Uh, Dana says red and gold. Kendra Williford. Uh, Wendy Cloth Broom says deep purple. Gary Vick says green. Smoke on the water, baby. Smoke on the <laughs> water. There's deep, says there's deep purple. Laura says purple and gold. Frank J. Fur says purple and blue. Uh, Marta says purple. Uh, Tim Short says... We're getting a says, lot of purples out there, huh? Yeah. Storm colors. Once, uh, uh, Tim Schurer says. Uh, Dane says gold and purple. Uh, Doug says sky blue pink with yellow dots. Sky blue pink. <laughs> with yellow dots. <laughs> um, Sai says yellow, red, and blue. Uh, Ellie Johnson says red, orange, and yellow like a phoenix. And, uh, okay. All right, orange. that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> No one says red, green, or blue, orange. Complementary colors. Jorge uh, says gold, uh, golden eagle with green wings. Well, let's see. We had a lot of purples in there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some purple in. Purple. I'll make purple or violet. 
I'll make that the uh, our base local color. Then we'll figure out from there. That's a lot of people. 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 Please. Please, please. 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 It's not people. That little part that I'm drawing right up here, that's called the sear. Right there. Right where the nostril is. The nostril is the nair. But the little that little part where the nostril sits and they're on the eagle's beak, it's called the sear. And C E R E. And Deepak, I do apologize for uh, skipping this question earlier. I, I just had to catch up with all the questions. I was falling behind, but thank you for resubmitting this. Um, in, in a much shorter way, it's actually a lot easier to read. Uh, Deepak uh, asked earlier, uh, said, Sir, uh, the head turn or face turn is very hard for me to draw. Like, from front is fine, but then at three quarter, I lose the consistency and character looks totally different. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how his nose and chin uh, looks in a different view. Like, how do you keep that consistency? I picture it in my head. And I think of the shapes in a very simple fashion. And I've also been doing it a long time. So it's, I mean, just, you know, by sheer experience, you're going to be able to do it a little better each time. But um, it, uh, it's just something that, you know, the more you picture it in your head, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And... Um, and so I just and I but I try to think in simple shape terms. Oh, we get that. I love drawing stuff like this. Fun. This is my world. I can create anything I want. In my my own personal thought. I wonder what would it be like if like if you could breathe underwater. I think it'd be no. awesome. No. Huh. Uh, shooting fire, but instead of like norm like normal flames, it'd be like a purple flame. Oh, I thought you were gonna say pink frosting. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say pink frosting. Pink frosting? Yeah, instead of like a regular frame, it's pink frosting. <laughs> flame, I mean. Flame. I said frame. Yeah, like he's spewing out pink frosting from a <laughs> cupcake. <laughs> what do they say in Letterkenny? It's totally cupcake. Or what do they call it? Uh, cupcake. When they, when they, it's a, for the party. Oh, super soft birthday party? Super soft, yeah. I want a super, super soft uh, cupcake. <laughs> so here I'm just shoring up the drawing. Uh, sometimes I do this, uh, sometimes I don't. Uh, this one I felt like I, I wanted to explore the pose a little bit more and the and the design as you know through the tying it down and just see if this is what I want to do. Uh, Shashi says, "Cheers from Mexico." Quick question. Uh, have you ever considered making a course about insects, like such as uh, tarantulas, anatomies, or anything of that sort? Well, that's an arachnid, but yes. Um, I just haven't had the time. And I'm not quite an, uh, an insect expert, so I would definitely have to educate myself before I could sit down and teach a course on it. Follow show. And will there be a uh, course on fantasy animals like dragons and unicorns? Yeah, so actually Tim Hodge is doing one uh, for that. Oh, really? Yeah, he, well, he's doing um, uh, you know, more of a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Aaron, Aaron and Dustin. You know from Canada. Uh, who was your inspiration when you worked at Disney? Well, there's a lot of people. I mean, probably any of the nine old men I, I just thought were great. But I really loved the work of Milt Call. He was kind of a... I never knew him. 
from what I know, he was a hard guy to get along with, but his, uh, his work was insanely good. And I've always really loved Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston's work as well. And then, of course, there's Glenn Keane. Glenn Keane, who's still, still out there animating and was my mentor. He was always an inspiration to me. You know, he's very good at inspiring all of us. So I'm just adding little details here and there. Yeah? Do you know of any artists that work in vector form instead of raster? Um, is the freedom of drawing raster more profitable than the clean precisionness of vector, or does it depend on whether the form is organic or is technical? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know, because I only draw in vector. Um, so I, I don't know how anyone can draw in, in vector or in uh, raster. It's really weird to me. Uh, have you seen Onward? What did you think? Um, I thought Onward was okay. I wasn't. I wasn't blown away by it. Uh, but I, I, you know, I liked it. I thought it was good. It was definitely a a fun movie. Yeah. It's definitely for people that love like the fantasy sort of feeling. Yeah. Um, what did you animate in Pocahontas? I animated Pocahontas. Yeah, I was with. Uh, I worked with Glenn Keane. He was a supervisor. I was one of the one of the many Pocahontas animators. There's a bunch of us, and that's who I animated. She was fun. She was difficult. Yeah, well, is it, it was the was it the hair? Oh, Nick says I draw in raster. I don't draw in vector. I draw in raster. You said that backwards. Oh, okay, gotcha. Sorry, I had it backwards, but you know what I mean. Nick, Nick, Nick corrected me, as he usually does. Uh, it's great for logos. Yes, it is great for logos. I just don't. It's not something that's organic enough for me. Are your drawings available for sale as a print? I would love to decorate my workspace with your art. Yes, I've got a bunch of prints available. You can go to our merchandise section on our website, and uh, you can get prints there, or you can go to um, uh, pixel.com and word and uh, art search my name at pixel.com, and there's a bunch of stuff there as well. If you go to our, our merchandise section, uh, you'll find a bunch of stuff there uh, at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Except animators, what are the most important people to have around during the production of an animated movie? Well, there's a lot of people. I mean, it's it, they're all... There is no one job that's most important you know there um, well I know that's not the question but there I mean there's they're all important you know, I guess is what I'm trying to say depending on what your style is you need to have cleanup artists but so, you know I, I personally like the rough style um, but you need you know, layout artists you need camera uh, technicians you need um, background painters and all kinds of stuff so um, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, someone's asking, and Brother Bear, uh, how did you decide that Kenai should stay as a bear uh, at the end? Because we felt like he wanted, he learned his lesson so much that he actually, we wanted his journey to be extreme, a journey of, of uh, love for this little bear. Um, so extreme that he, you know, I, I wanted to contrast who he was from the beginning to who he becomes. And so the biggest contrast I could do, I could think of, or any of us could think of, was him going from, I hate bears, I'm stuck as a bear, and all I want to do is become human, to at the end, 
he wants to stay a bear. And we figured that was the you know the the biggest leap in his development, and so we decided to run with that. Have you ever considered writing a book on drawing? Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, we're, we're Nick and I have been talking about taking many of our courses and turning them into books. So that might be something you see down the road in the coming years. Will you ever do a dinosaur course like with paleo art? I might. I just don't know dinosaurs uh, as well as I should in order to do a course. So once again, it's something I'll have to educate myself on. And uh, But I think it's a cool idea. Deepak says, love you, sir. I love the movie The Brother Bear. I cry every time I watch that movie. So hard touching. <laughs> love <Good>. you, sir. <laughs> love you, too. Hey, it's Friday, man. It is Friday. How do you cope with big, ongoing projects wearing off your excitement for creating and pursuing big projects to come? Well... The big thing you got to remember when you're doing a big project is that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so you set, you know, we get really good at setting little mini goals. And when you achieve those mini goals, we get really excited. And we celebrate our little achievement and then we move on. And that's really the best way to get through a long project like an animated movie, which might take four years to make. You know, you got to really kind of just hunker down, settle in and go in for the long ride. A uh, question. Yes. While reading a book on watercolor, the instruction, uh, one of the instructions was to prep your paper, uh, uh, the prep was to submerge the whole sheet of paper in the water. Yes. Uh, I'm afraid to try it and ruin the paper. No, nope, that's have, what it's made for. So have you ever done that? Uh, yes. Does it work to keep the paper from bending? Yep. Well, what you do is you submerge the entire paper and then you take it out and let it drip and get all the excess water out of it so it's still wet uh, but it's not dripping wet and then you lay it on the board and you can either tack it down tape it down whatever so that when you do paint on it after it dries it's going to tighten up but after well, uh, make sure it's pinned down before it dries so they'll it'll dry really tight because it'll shrink again but then when you paint it that, that it'll swell up but it won't buckle buckle well, couldn't, couldn't talk too well there I used to put them in the bathtub. I used to uh, submerge the paper in the bathtub. And then I would stretch the paper on uh, painting stretchers. And I'd just staple, I'd staple the edge of the paper all the way around. You know, I'd make the make sure that it was much bigger than my drawing surface, so I'd staple it down and I'd hit it with a hair dryer. And so then it was dry on both sides and it was open air on both sides. I didn't have to have it sitting on a board. And that thing would be as tight as a drum once I, uh, once I blue dry, blow dried it, blue dried it, and uh, um, and then when I paint on it, it, it wouldn't buckle up. Works great. Works great. Works <laughs> fantastic. Uh, YouTube question: How do you how do you have any sketches of Pocahontas lying around you can show us, like you showed Milan sketches? I don't. I don't have any right now. All right, let's do this. Let's get a uh, little purple. Little have purple. you seen? Have you seen the French Canadian short film called a uh, Croc? Croc? C R A C? Um, no. And what do you? Th uh, so you didn't see it? No. Uh, do you have any other uh, favorite shorts? Oh, I've got a lot of uh, shorts that I like. I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, I think one of my favorites I keep forgetting about is the uh, the bouncing ja uh, jackalope. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, like the magic hat with the bunny. I think a very the one I always enjoy was I think it was the very first one, um, or at least the first one I remember, of um, the old man playing chess. Yeah, Jerry's game. Yeah. Then he made an appearance on um, in Toy Story 2. 
Yes, he, yes yeah. he did. Old Jerry. Yeah. All right, so I'm I'm just laying down a, a, a purple value over everything, and then we're going to vary it up. I'll lock that layer. We'll get in and we'll vary it up. But the dominant color is going to be violet. Hi, Aaron. When learning art, should we focus on learning everything at once, anatomy, color, lighting, composition, etc., or pick a facet to master first? Thanks, from Texas. Well, I don't know that you'll ever master any of them. I think we're all, we all strive to master. Um, but I, I do think you can't learn one without the other. So, like, if you're looking at anatomy, let's say you're figure drawing, right? As you're figure drawing, you're learning lighting as well because that figure is going to be lit and you're going to see the form and all of that. And as you're creating that image on your paper, you're going to think about the composition of that image, right? So you're learning composition as well. So they're not mutually exclusive. I think you, you know, they all have to, they all kind of work together. And, um, and then you learn that in that way. You never really, uh, it's like the fundamentals of animation. You don't sit down and just practice squash and stretch and then you go on to overlap it's they all they all are part of you know they all connect with one another and so it's the same with that and so uh so i guess my answer is you learn it all at once you can focus on you know different aspects like like you listed but you really can't get away from you know you you, you got to think of all of them at once especially if when you're if you're working uh, a composition, you know, a, a piece that has a lot of elements in it. Pocahontas was my favorite Disney movie while growing up. Uh, did you work on the sequel, Pocahontas 2? No. I did not. And you did not, uh, and you were not part of the Brother Bear sequel either, the Brother no, Bear 2? No, I was not. I've never worked on a sequel. That I can think of. Have I worked on a sequel? No. So there he is. He's purple. We got a purple dragon. Very purple. Um, hey, Aaron, would you be interested in doing a pupil placement and contours tutorial for defining sight lines? Sometimes it's tough to nail exactly where to put them. Huge fan. Thanks. Um, I could definitely do a video on it. I don't know that it requires an entire. Uh, uh, do be. Uh, Oh, yeah, it's a tutorial. Yeah, so I could do, definitely do a tutorial on it for sure. But it's, you know, one of the biggest things I think about is, you know, when, when and we, we kind of see, we, we innately know this um, when we see, and that is one, one thing right off the bat. When you're placing the pupils, if you have two characters that are close together, even if the character is off screen, but if they're close together, especially if you see both eyes of, of, the, of the subject in the, in the shot, a lot of times you might want to pull the eyes ever so slightly crossed because we're looking towards an object, we're looking towards a point that's usually at arm's length away for, for somebody having a conversation. That's something that people don't quite realize. When you're looking at something far away, the eyes will spread a little bit more because they're looking uh, at a further distance. And so that's one thing that will help. And I mean ever slightly crossed. You don't want to make them goofy. On average, how many people work on an animated movie? On average, probably about 350. That's how many we had at our studio. About 350. Can you offer any tips on uh, anthropomorphism? Um, like how do you get the balance between human and animal? You know what? I don't know that there's any formula that I use. I just try to do what I feel is a good uh, composition. All right. Well, it's just not. It's not a. Uh, it's not cooperating with me. I didn't have the uh, the purple in here as thickly as I thought I did. Um. So purple and yellow are complementary colors. So I wanted to see what this looks like doing the yellow beak. How's the Android version of the app coming along? How's what? The uh, Android Oh, the Android version, version of, of the app. app. I don't know. That's a question for Nick. Hey, Nick. How's the... 
Uh, oh yeah, Nick, Rescuers Down Under was a sequel. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> I knew he'd catch me on something. I forgot about that. Um, I did work on a sequel, Rescuers Down Under. I forgot about that. And that was my very first feature. I should have remembered that. Because <clears throat> the first one was like what early early mid eighties? No, it was uh, nineteen seventy seven. Seventy seven? Yeah, I saw it in the theater. Wow, I keep forgetting how old that one is. It's not that old. <laughs> Compared to the other movies, it kind of is. <laughs> What's your favorite character to anime out of all of them you did on Disney? Probably Beast. I loved animating Beast. It was a lot of fun, that guy. Do you want the surface of uh, Arches paper or not because it's not blocked already? Or because it's on a block already? Do I wet it? Yeah, do you wet yeah, it? Yeah, because, you know, wetting it does different things. It's not, yeah, yes, I do wet it. You know, whether you wet the paper or you paint dry, wet onto dry or, you know, it's going to give you all different effects. Those are, you know, so you got it depends on what you're wanting the, the paint to do. And she says, hi, hi again, thanks for answering my uh, question from earlier. No, on Brother Bear. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the French movie based on Inuit uh, background called The Boy Who Wanted to Be a Bear? A 2002 movie, very similar to Brother Bear. I think you might like it. I've never seen it, never heard of it. Yes, I will check it out. Nick says that uh, the Android version of the app is moving along quite nicely. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's taking a little bit of time, but we'll get it out. Eric uh, Descalo says, hey, Aaron. Hey. Uh, have you ever wondered about the dinosaur's image? Uh, considering your knowledge about animal skulls, do you think dinosaurs could look different? Uh, I think it would be awesome if you draw a dinosaur on your approach from their skulls. Yeah, I'd love to. I love doing that kind of stuff. As you know. Uh, do you like European films? Um, as much as I like... I mean, there's just as many bad European films as there are... Uh, good ones just like in uh, non-european films so it, to me it's not a sure yeah sure <laughs> uh, also what do you think about the uh, similarity of idea of stories between brother bear and brave and what are your thoughts on that say that again um what are your thoughts on the similarities uh, between Brother Bear and Brave, basically? Uh, I'm going to pass on that question. All right. Oh, Dan Knight. Yeah, I totally agree on that, Arturo. Uh, Dan Knight is an amazing short, too. Uh, one of my favorites from uh, Pixar commented. Knight and, day and Night, uh, I, I keep saying Night and Day. Day and Night is the um, one of the two... Um, 2D animated characters and one is day and one is night uh -huh. and like in their bodies it's showing like a CG world of like daytime like you have the planes flying by and cars driving along and nighttime is like is like all the cows sleeping and this and that oh that's cool uh why do a lot of animators seem to hate anime I don't know that a lot of animators hate anime I don't know that's a true statement I think um, there, some uh, some anime can come across as being formulaic, 
very cliche. Cliche, definitely the style. It sometimes feels the same, although I, you know, I know it's not all the same. But uh, I'm trying to answer the question, so I'm just I'm trying to anticipate anyone going. It's not all the same, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think you know I don't think a lot of animators hate it. First of all, because uh, I know a lot of animators that 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 do like it. We're going really bright with this guy. No kidding. <laughs> Why not, right? Why not? We're going to have some fun with the markings. Uh, Sal says, I saw your prints at Lightbox last year. They looked gorgeous. Uh, what type of paper did you decide to use, and did you send the prints off somewhere to get printed? If so, where did you send them? Because they did a fantastic job. Well, we sent them to Nick Birch. <laughs> we have a uh, we have a, a large format printer, and uh, we just bought some really high quality paper, and uh, and printed them out. Nick handled it on his end. He's got the printer at his place, and so he did all of all of the prints. We've had a, lar a large format printer for a couple of years now, and uh, we really enjoy it. What ratings we give uh, to TV Paint versus Photoshop and versus Clip Studio uh, rating out of five? I give TV Paint a five. The other ones I don't know. I te well, Photoshop, I give it a zero. Photoshop a zero? Yeah, for animating in Photoshop. It's not what it's for. And so many people insist on saying that it's great, and I just don't agree. It's not what it's for. The Photoshop is good for illustration, just bad at animating. Yeah. Or, or you know, photo retouch or whatever. Uh, how's the picture of Sarasota coming? Uh, that's a... Uh, um that's a Nick question that, at this point. Uh, they do, you got yours done? Oh yeah, they, they, they've been done. Just uh, Nick is uh, putting it all together right now. Twitch question, have you, have you seen Song of the Sea by Cartoon Saloon? I certainly have. I love it. I've been to Cartoon Saloon. I really like the people there. Uh, Mariana uh, Garcia asks, Dustin, did you ever take your dad to one of your classes where parents talk about their jobs? I see that a lot in the movies, although it's not a thing in uh, Mexico. Um, I don't know if we ever did the whole, like, like, like all the parents come together to talk about their jobs, but I do remember um, the teachers inviting you uh, for art present, like, to yeah. talk about your job, yeah. but it was by yourself. It wasn't with any of the other parents. And we did have bring your kid to work day as well. So you came, you know, to the studio. Yeah. That's, where, that's, about, like, that's how you get to class. meet Phil Collins. Yep. I was having a meeting with Phil Collins, and Dustin got to meet him up on the on the video on, conference. On the telly. As far as the uh, classes go... Um, yeah, he's been, like, I think I recommended to teachers to invite you, to to invite you in to um, talk about animation, talk about art. Yeah. In the art classes, but, yeah. In the art classes, but? But, yeah. Right, right in the butt. Have you ever seen Rock and Rule? It's one great movie to watch. Hi, like, Alice in Wonderland. I actually have watched Rock and Roll. I've watched that at least two or three different times. I've never seen it. It's animated? Yeah, it's animated, and it's, um... It was back in the... I think it was made back in the 80s. And it's very... 
like very rock and roll. Gotcha. I got yeah, a question here. Do you think graphic de uh, graphic design degree is a decent substitute for an illustration degree? Can you still get work in illustration? Well, first of all, you don't really need a degree for any either one of those jobs. You need the degree. The only reason you need a degree is to get yourself educated. But you can educate yourself in different ways. A graphic design uh, degree is different than an illustration degree. The training is different. Um, and so... Uh, if you want to be an illustrator and you want to go to college, then go into gra go into illustration. Um, otherwise, if you want to design magazine layout or you know do a lot of work with editorial and that sort of thing, then that's going to be more of your graphic design degree. It's not you know graphic designers often hire the illustrators. Graphic designers often become art directors of magazines and that sort of thing. If I wanted to print a piece I drew on Photoshop, but don't own a large format printer, how would I, how would I go about that? There's a lot of places online that print. So just look up online printing. I use pixels.com. Um, there's also Printful. It's another company that we use. So there's a lot of places. I watched a video, a Twitch question, I watched a video that dealt with why versus how to make art, or uh, why versus how to make art, meaning why you make art is more important than how you do it. Why do you do art? What motivates you? You know what, I, I've often thought about that, and I don't know. I don't know why I do it. I, I can't not do it. It's like asking me why I eat food. Why do you breathe? It's so, it's, I'm, I'm, it's so innate in me that I just have this overwhelming urge to do it. I do it when I'm not even thinking about doing it. You know, if I'm talking on the phone, I'm making art, I'm drawing, I'm doodling, I'm whatever. It's something my brain does, and so I can't not do it. And, uh, and that's how it's always been for me. What's the uh, current brush you're using? This is just my regular sketching brush that I, I made this brush about five years ago and I've always used it. I really like it. Uh, you can get it free on my website if you sign up for the newsletter. It was Phil Collins like in person. Oh, he's great. Just like anybody else. And, uh, but he's super talented. But um, he was very nice. We worked together for four years, and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. Have you seen the movies Heavy Metal or um, Allegro Non Troppo? And so, what did you think? I haven't seen the second one, but I did watch... Uh, I've, I've seen bits and pieces of Heavy Metal. I'm not a big fan of Heavy Metal. I thought it was okay. Uh... It's a little too much rotoscoping for me. Um, the storylines I don't think were that great. So I've never, I've never really been a huge fan of, of that film. Although I have a lot of friends that worked on it. <laughs> I think one, one of the top uh, rotoscope films of that, of that time would be Fire and Ice. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty Ooh, much Frazetta, all Frazetta had a big part of that. Huh? Frazetta, Frank Frazetta, the fantasy illustrator. Yeah. Had a big part of that. Yeah, he also did a lot of the animation for uh, the the old Lord of the Rings animated. That was Batchy. That was Batchy? Yeah. But Batchy also did Fire and Ace, right? Yeah, but, but the but the art direction was based on Frank Frazetta's fantasy illustration. Oh, gotcha. Wait, was he the only one that designed Conan? Yes. Okay. The Destroyer and yeah, all that. Conan the Barbarian, those, those Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see that art style in, in Fire and Ice. Yeah. Now, now it's all coming together. Now it's you all see? making sense. You see? I see. I think. I, I, I think see, said I the blind man. I think I see. I, I don't quite know if I see yet there, but... So I'm just throwing in some markings. Who knows? Oh yeah, 
uh, Kendra says, if you ever watch the movie Hook, um, that stars Robin Williams, uh, Phil Collins is the, is the inspector who comes to the house right after Hook kidnaps the kids. Yes. I always forget that. Well, Phil, when he was young, he, he was an actor as well. He was one of the kids in the crowd uh, in the Beatles' Hard Day's Night. What? Yeah. He's in the crowd. Not a lot of people know that. Not a whole lot of people. Oh. YouTube question. How can I make my digital art look finished? It never looks done to me. Um, sit there longer? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I, it, that's a broad question because I don't know how it's looking unfinished. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Nora says, I drew with you last Tuesday, the old tree now, but I noticed that the brush, which I used mostly for the tree, made it look all blurry. Can you let me know which brush I could use uh, from your set instead, which has no blurry effects. Uh, and do you remember which one you used for the tree? Uh, it was probably just my the regular one. It was either the standard. I was using a standard, uh, uh, just round brush that that comes with Photoshop, and I was using the one I always sketch with, number pastel number seven, pastel seven, in my original set. And Frank Jaffer uh, says that the uh, uh, that Allegro non troppo is the Italian version of Fantasia. Ah. Gotcha. This is crazy. This is what you get when you when you do a purple dinosaur or purple dragon. <laughs> How hands on were you as a director with the music part of Brother Bear? Um Quite a bit. I mean, we we um, we discussed the lyrics. We discussed uh, melody a lot. I had a very close relationship with the composer as well, with Phil. Um, they had a very close relationship. They worked together on Tarzan, and uh, we had the same composer as Tarzan, and uh, Mark Mancina, who is just a great, great, great guy, and um, very collaborative. And uh, so we were really pretty deeply involved. I was at every recording session. Uh, did you know Ann Sullivan? Um, no, I didn't know her personally. Uh, Valeria says, I'm using your pastel C brush right now and I love it, thanks. You're welcome. That is one weird looking dragon, <laughs> eagle dragon. But hey, let's just roll with it. Let's roll with it. It looks fabulous. Let's get some shadows in there. And Kendra Wolfer says also in Hook, uh, actress uh, Glenn Close is dressed as a pirate and is the pirate that gets Isn't put she in the sh boom box. I thought she was Shmi. She played Shmi. No, Shmi was um, oh, that was the, uh, the, the detective guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're right. It was uh, yeah, that was uh, Bob Hoskins. Are animators born or made, Aaron? They are made. Although some people are born to animate, I guess. I don't want the light direction coming from there. No, I don't want the light direction coming from there. I want to do this. Huh. Let me make this warm. Yeah, here's a side-by-side -side between Glenn Close and 
they yeah. were portrayed. Yeah I, yeah, I never knew that. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. My mind has officially been kaboomed. <laughs> the earth shattering kaboom? The earth shattering kaboom. YouTube comment, he looks like he's singing in the shower. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think you're right. <laughs> Pico says, this guy is like Rodan crossed with a toxic mushroom. Very cool. <laughs> hey, you got to experiment. You're never going to grow unless you experiment. Priscilla says, uh, just recently started watching your live streams. Oh, good. I love tuning in while I work on my own art projects. And today, my seven-year-old son, Charles, joined me. And he's working on Photoshop, too. Right on, Charles. That's great. Well, I hope you guys have fun today. We're having fun creating this guy. This crazy, crazy <laughs> dragon eagle. Laura says, as an English person, I'm loving the British accent attempts. Maybe you could do the whole episode like this. <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> so we're adding shadow right now. says so is this creature going to be an Egon or a Dragon? <laughs> it is a that's a good question let's make it a what do you think Dustin a Draggle a Draggle Draggle Egon an Egan Egan an Egon an Egan. An Edrin? No. Uh, you alright? You got brain freeze? A Dregal. What do you think? Dregal? Draggle? I said with Dregal. Dregal. Like D R E A G L E. Dregal. So I'm coloring, I'm going to go to a more of a cool. Let's do this. What do you think? Dregal. Egon. <laughs> Nick just pulled up Egon from Ghostbusters. <laughs> Egon! <laughs> Do not cross the streams. Be very, very bad. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> you said that was bad. <laughs> Man, I cannot wait for that sequel to come out. It's kind of interesting in how, like, that hype just built up so quick for that sequel that after all this stuff started happening it just just fell so far behind well, the whole movie industry is falling behind <laughs> they're singing in the shower don't forget to put flower, flowers in your hair <laughs> when you go to San Francisco to San Francisco Oh, 
Don't forget to follow in your career. <laughs> First big forgiver. Losing my mind. I've been watching a lot of quadruped walks, uh, especially lions walking, and I noticed that when walking, the back legs move first and the front ones move after them. Yes. I always thought it was the other way around. Is that something you've noticed as well? Yes. And, and, and it's not a hundred percent of the time. It's it's uh, well, the back feet are always going to come forward to replace where the front foot is. Yes, that's how that works. But as far as when the walk starts, it could be any foot starting. Uh, Sean says hi, Aaron Blaze. Hi. Uh, my daughter Tawny wants to know what program you're using. I'm using Photoshop right now. Photoshop, digital painting. Um, go ahead and show the setup. Yes. And um, I'm working on a Wacom Cintiq 32 Pro, which I highly recommend if you do uh, a regular amount of digital painting and you can swing the price tag. I, uh, I highly recommend it because it's a wonderful tool. If you're asking about what, uh, what streaming software we're using, uh, we are using a software called OBS, or Open Broadcast Software, if you want to do your own broadcast. OBS. OBS. And Bonnie Phillips is asking, will this be available on your print store? Oh, this image? Yes. Uh, it could be, maybe. I haven't really thought about it. I think you should. If, if there's a demand for it, this is kind of a, this is a trippy looking dragon eagle. <laughs> this thing's weird. It's just a weird image. But there's always somebody out there that's going to like it. I dropped the ball on this one today. <laughs> but we'll roll with it. Hey, Aaron. Uh, which, hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Uh, which bird species will be included in the new bird of prey first. Well, I'm going to hit all 10 genuses, except for secretary bird. I don't think I'm going to do, be doing a secretary bird. Uh, I could. I might. Go. But I'm going to do one or two uh, eagles. Um, I'm definitely going to do an osprey. I'm going to do one or two of the true hawks. Um, I'm going to do one or two of the uh, uh, butios. Or buzzards, um, and then I'm going to do you know one or two of the uh, vultures, one of, one from the kite section, um, one or two from falcons, um, one from the caracara family. I think that's it. I think I nailed everything. Hello from Sweden. I am really excited for the Bird of Prey course as well. And I wonder, uh, will we see all the bird skulls in the course? Yeah. You missed we the beginning. I, I, uh, I just tried to order all the skulls that I need for the course. And um, the company that I order the skulls from um, is under stay-at-home orders. And so they can't mail anything out until they're not considered essential. So they can't mail anything out until the stay-at-home orders are lifted, which will probably be another two weeks. So it might it might delay the uh, the course a little bit, or we might just decide to push on, and I'll just draw the skulls in, and then when they when they do come in the mail, we'll we'll photograph them and use them as a supplement. And uh, Sean, the one that was asking about the uh, software uh, for our daughter says thanks, Aaron. Um, my daughter wants to be an animator. Oh, right on. Hello from Australia. How are you? Do you ever work with colored pencils? <clears throat> when I was younger, I only I exclusively worked with colored pencils. That's all I used. But I haven't used, really used colored pencils. I did a, I did a one little drawing. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Where's what? A little colored pencil drawing. 
over here. Is it up here? Uh, I don't know what I did with it. You don't know? I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah, put it in here. Oh, there yeah, this one. There we go. Right, I got a cover standing up. So this was a. Uh, I did this a little bit a while, but can you see it? Yep. Yeah, that was a little colored pencil one that I did a while back, uh, you know, Sunday evening, just wanting to do some drawing. But uh, yes, yeah, so I do colored pencil. They're fun. And uh, some people were saying you have to do a secretary bird for the course, and it's so unique. It is unique. I probably will do a secretary bird. Secretary birds are their own kind of genus. A single species. So same with ospreys. Very unique. And uh, owls are going to be included in the course as well. Oh yeah, I forgot owls. Yep, thank you. Yes, definitely owls. I forgot to put that on the list when I was reciting it in my head. There we go. Did you ever go to any of the sanctuaries featured in the Tiger King? I could have sworn I saw you in one of the shots of the documentary. If not, <laughs> then I saw your doppelganger. No, it was you didn't see me. <laughs> we were nowhere near those places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that freaking documentary. <laughs> Did you actually watch it finally? I watched it twice. All of it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> even the one that even the part that they recently they recently added a new a new episode of like kind of like the aftermath. Oh they did? I haven't of, seen that. Yeah. And, and they released it during the during the pandemic and so instead of like in person interviews it's um it's done through uh, like Skype chats. Oh it's what's his name did that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Twitch question, how did you deal with competition growing up? Now especially, there's so many incredibly talented people. Well, there's not any more talented people now than there were then. I never worried about competition. You don't worry about that kind of stuff. You just do the best you can do. I never, ever worried about it. Honestly. <laughs> Nick said he could only make it through two and a half episodes. It was just too slimy. <laughs> yeah. Like he says, Aaron is the real Tiger King. Am I right? <laughs> no, you are not right. No. <laughs> he ain't no Tiger King. Yeah, and Nick, it doesn't get better either. I believe I just ran out of comments. Oh, there we go. Oh, in a good way. <laughs> He's a real Tiger King <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> well, I don't know what a good way means when you're talking about Tiger King. That's all right. I think they. <laughs> Dick says, freaking Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, cute 
cool little cats and kittens. <laughs> but Anta does that too well. Oh, the, the cat and kitten yeah. intro? Yeah. Starting to get a little bit of form on the on this guy. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. What? What do you say? What? 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 What do you say? What? 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 Whoa! Just stay back there, bud. <laughs> King of the hand-drawn tigers. How's that? There Is you that go. <laughs> All you need now is bowling and a six shooter. <laughs> <laughs> and a tiger printed in a tiger printed shirt. <clears throat> Instead of Tiger King, you're the tiger artist. There you go. <laughs> I'll take that. I'm Aaron Blaze and I'm the tiger artist. <laughs> Are you going to give this guy a building or something for a sense of scale in the background? Maybe. Right now I'm just focusing on trying to get it all laid out. I see you draw on uh, Strathmore paper, the gray one. Yeah. Uh, but are there any more gray paper that you recommend to draw on? Canson. Canson's really good. Yeah. Yep. Now, which brushes are you currently using, and are they uh, available for sale on the website? Yeah, just my seven, my number seven brush. This is one I use for almost everything, and they uh, you can get it for free on the website. Uh, if you do the Lightbox Expo, uh, will you do a live draw day at the LA Zoo? Yes. If we have time, uh, this past time, uh, I had too many things. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, there's no guarantee yet if I'll be able to do it, but I really would like to be able to. YouTube question. Do you recommend drawing on a tilted angle for a beginner? I'm trying to maintain decent posture, but I only have a flat surface to draw on. Yeah, just draw on whatever you want. It's not going to, you know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to hurt yourself. And it depends on how many hours a day you're drawing. But, um, I, uh, I always worked, whoops, talk on it. I always worked on a um, on a tilt. I've always worked on a tilted surface from you know working at my animation desk to whatever. So you just got to be careful. Huh. Peter Bernal says that April twenty second is Earth Day. Well, right on. We'll have to do something for that. We're gonna have to have an Earth Day even deeper sale. There you go. How's that? How much deeper can we go? All the way to the end, other end of the earth. <laughs> Uncle Travis says, "Just stepped away for a while, and wow, loves it. Love this one. <laughs> this one's crazy." <laughs> and Peter also says, "Nice bird-like dragon, or whatever that is." <laughs> <laughs> And Lunatic Fringe says, love the animation uh, live stream you did. And what are your plans for the next live stream? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure yet. I, I know we had it uh, put down. Nick, do you remember what uh, the next live stream was supposed to be? I can't remember. Uh, YouTube question. Is there some invented dragon anatomy? What if I'm interested in sculpting a dragon, but I'm feeling uncomfortable without knowing where the bones and muscles are? Well, that is on you to get in there and start understanding bird anatomy, uh, reptile anatomy, 
all of that, that's what you need to know in order to do your fantasy creatures. You need to know the real world before you can start start abstracting from it. You know, look at people like Terrell Whitlatch, who's an incredible de uh, creature designer, dragon designer. Um, she's amazing. But she has a degree in biology, and she understands the forms. Absolutely. So you got to understand, you know, the physiology, why muscles are built where they are, you know, why they are, why they're attached the way they are. All of those are things that will help you in creating your own creatures. Oh, our next stream will be on animal drawing, but we have not finalized the date yet. So there you go. Uh, did you see the video of Elvira spoofing Carol Baskin? Oh, really? No, I didn't. Let me see that later. Have you drawn golden tigers? They are utterly gorgeous creatures. No, but I've seen them. So I'm just going in now and adding a few darker, deeper darks here and there. Here and there. Here and there. Deeper darks. Do you think there are any particular overused gags in modern animated movies? Like, for example, a character gets nervous, uh, uh, winces, and darts off scene? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cliches, sure. I think there's cliches in every movie. Faux show. Should I do the the classic shadow that I do on every single one of them? Pardon? Should I do the shadow that I always do for this one? I definitely need I definitely need to put a shadow over all of this. I think I'm gonna push it all in the shadow. Uh, give it a try. Just to make it feel like it's pushed back and turned under. Keep drawing too small. Sorry, guys. I love. I I wanted to. Oh, sorry. I wanted to ask what advice you have for high school artists who are going to art school. Tips: Do a lot of art. Crank it. Thicken your skin so you can take criticism. Know that you don't know everything. Listen to the teacher when they say put down the anime for a little while. But work hard, no matter what. And then, hi, are you using any reference while drawing right now? No, I am not. This is purely made up. <laughs> if you can't tell that, ooh. You know what we need? You know what we need? You know what we need? To save? Dustin? We need to save? What the heck are... Yeah, I need to save. Where are the spots? Oh, there they are. Um, I do need to save. I'm going to do something. File. Save as. Eagle Dragon. Are there any programs similar to Photoshop that you recommend? Say that again? Are there any programs similar to Photoshop that you recommend? Uh, Painter. Corel Painter I think is really cool. I know there's other paint programs out there, I just don't know them. So I'm going to add some details in this. I like yellow and orange, I mean yellow, I like yellow and violet together. The compliments and I like seeing them together. So I'm just going to add a little bit of detail in these spots. 
to get them to pop a little bit better. Um, what's the brush that you're using to fill in the shadows? Oh, it's just it's the same brush. Following on the cliche comment, what's your le least favorite animated cliche? Fart gags. I mean, hey, I know farts are funny, <laughs> but fart gags, too many fart gags in movies. some kind of uh, burn tool for shadows and highlights? No, I'm just changing the blend mode. So when I do shadows, I change the blend mode to uh, to multiply. And when I'm doing the highlights, I'm changing it to overlay. Man, I'm getting tired of the sound of my chair. <laughs> I, I had the exact same thing at mine with my chair at home. Just over time, it just gets squeaky. It just need needs oiling. I know it needs something. Uh, can we know when the anatomy of bird cores will be available? Um, it's it, going to be soon. Um, it's going to take a little while because um, uh, it's going to be a lot of videos. Lots of videos. Yeah. Very high quality videos too. Yeah. So I want to make sure that's like that's looking right. Because this is one of the first, first courses that that we're filming in, in a. Hall. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too. Yeah. We're doing it in four K. Our first, uh, our first course, uh, that will be done in four K. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, because we've done, um, I think we've done some YouTube videos in four K, but I don't think we've ever Have done four K for courses. I don't know. Are you going to draw another uh, another creature or animal? I think it's just going to be the one for today. Oh yeah, no, no. yeah, this is the <laughs> only one for today. We're at, we're almost at two hours already. Yep. Jeez, I got to finish this up. How do you change the blend mode? Over here, uh, you can either change the blend mode on your brush right here, where it says normal up at the upper left. There, you uh, you hit on the, the it has a drop down menu, and you can change the blend mode on your brush. Or you can change the blend mode on your layer over here on the right, like so. <laughs> the chair is sort of ASMR-ish. <laughs> it's what? ASMR. The you ever heard of ASMR? No. It. Oh, I don't know if it'll. I'm sure it'll make you feel uncomfortable. It's, but it's those where you. Put headphones on and oh, it is like all it the sounds. Into like the different sounds. Yeah, and it just makes you cringe. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently to some it's very soothing, but to others like me, it's like, oh God, please get out of my ear. Yeah, exactly. So now I'm going to a normal blend mode to hit some of my details. Um, are there going to be any animations involved in the Birds of Prey course? Oh, like absolutely. Kind of there's like going to be fly? yes. There's going to be a lot of animation. That's one of the things I'm really excited about. I love animating birds. I love animating birds flying. For some reason, I don't know why, but I just do. I've always been fascinated by flight. And uh, yes, I'm gonna do a lot of that. If you need a new chair, I recommend the Jaffalet from Ikea. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Emma Stone <laughs> from Saturday Night Live, <laughs> in case you're wondering what the heck that was. It was one of the weirdest skits I've ever seen, but it was incredibly funny. I don't know if I should say the whole line or just... No, nah, just leave shot. it alone. <laughs> Shut up, Jerry. Martin Berger says that Aaron is the king of drawing lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. You always use your layer modes on normal? No. 
That's what I'm just saying. Sometimes I put them on overlay. Sometimes I do uh, multiply. And Erica Bay says, yay for burn animation. Oh, yeah. We're going to have fun with that. Hey, Erica Bay. Uh, Caitlin Becker asks, are you ever going to go back to your previous animal courses and add some animation, uh, such as like a lion run or anything of that sort? Uh, maybe. I didn't think about that. Uh, what we are going to do, rather than going back to those other things, we are planning a, a whole course on just animal locomotion, where we go in and we animate a lot of different types of animals and the way they the way they move specifically. And Manny just said, "How's it going there, Aaron Blaze?" <laughs> B L A Z E. <laughs> Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. It's going well, my friend. It's going well. And Zungi says, this week I've been enjoying the fundamentals of animation course you did. Very good. Thank you. You are absolutely, without a doubt, in my mind, very welcome. And I get... And uh, Gangdolf, uh Trend says, can you give us a brief description of what layers you use and why? Well, I use, first I do a rough sketch layer, and that's just to find the composition, like we did earlier. And then I do a refined sketch layer, often, not always. And that's just to kind of get the, get the, uh, you know, get it more refined and, and understanding the, the form a little bit more. Um, and then I, let me see here, that's overlay, multiply right there. And then I, um, do a, a local color layer. I got to do another one. Then I uh, start adding a shadow layer, which is set to multiply. And uh, I work that in there. I'm trying to darken the shadow with another multiply layer. Uh, and then I hit my highlights with an overlay layer. And then I start really kind of working up. At that point, I kind of know I can see the form and I just start uh, pushing and pulling and adding adding uh, reflected lights and things like that and I'm kind of trying to do that here and then I put a layer on top that's pretty much set to normal and I just start hitting my brightest brights and little little areas of uh, highlights and that sort of thing. <laughs> Jordan says, listening as I clean. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Jordan uh, Childress. Oh. Childress? Childress? So now I can, I'm starting to go in and just refine all this. And uh, I'm going to do a uh, I'm going to do a reflected secondary light over here. Erica uh, is saying, really digging the beat. Well, thank you. That was Erica Bay. Erica Bay, yeah. Thank you, Erica Bay. Fire, fire, fire. My friend. I hope you and Frankie are doing well. Make that a little brighter.
just adding a little extra light here like I like to do. And he says, if this thing would charge me, I would be afraid but mostly confused about what the hell is, is what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's the point. <laughs> Erica Bay says, we are doing awesome. He is watching along with me. Right on. Hey, Frankie. Hey, Frankie. Miss you, bud. Most both of you. Uh, dang it, Austin. Do you have to do uh, your best, Jagger? Yeah. See, right, hang on. Austin and Dustin have this thing where they tell each other they have to do their best Jagger all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just I just put the camera out on me for that second there, just so Austin knows that I did it. <laughs> Doing your best Jagger. Doing my best Jagger. You got the moves like Jagger. Eh. I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna be like, what, "What? What? What are you doing? That's not Jagger." Uh, I know this was asked before, but what kind of digital art tablet uh, do you use? I missed the name. Uh, beautiful work, by the way. Love your art and your vision. Switch to the camera, baby. Well, but, uh, Here we are. This is my uh, Wacom Cintiq 32 Pro. I love it. It's the best Cintiq I've ever had. I think I've had every model they've ever made. Twitch question. Hey, Aaron, I have a few ideas for some projects. I currently write them down very basically. How do you recommend I should document, sketch, plan everything? Well, writing it down like that is a great first step. Then you got to work out kind of a treatment. You know, sit down and discipline yourself. Try to find some structure to the story, and um, and then from there try to you know come up with some visuals, and then uh, and you know they'll evolve from there. That you know once you have your your treatment or approach, well first start with an approach, which is just usually a just a one page document, and then uh, and then work that up to a treatment, which is usually could be up to twenty pages that tell a story, depending on how long. It is that you're that you're creating. And a good friend of yours ju just hopped on and says hi, and said that I got the moves like Jackson. Jim Jackson. Jim Jackson, baby. The eleventh man to ever walk, walk on, on the, the moon. moon. There he is, my good friend Jim Jackson, my brother from another mother. Jim, take a bow. We hope that you are staying safe, you and your family. We miss you. Jim and I worked for a long time together at Disney. Jim's an amazing animator. Jim's going to be doing some courses with us, actually. Once we can get over this uh, travel ban. Hi, Aaron. Have you ever, Hi. in your career, received some really harsh feedback on your work? And if so, uh, how did it help you grow as a professional artist? Well, I'm, uh, anytime you get any kind of feedback that helps you, that criticizes, if you get over the criticism part um, and take it as information that's going to help you, then, yeah, you'll always grow from that. It all it all depends on how thickly you can you know how thick your skin is. Don't you know unless someone's mean spirited, but sometimes that can happen. Um, really listen to what people have. Don't pay attention to the way the the information is delivered because sometimes it can be harsh. But pay attention to really what's being said. And uh, and take it to heart. You know, I've had some really strong criticisms in my in my in my time, but I really I listened to them, and uh, and it really did help me. 
I'm pretty new to digital art and I've been using Ibis Paint. Uh, any tips when it comes to doing sketching and making the landscape backgrounds? I don't know what Ibis Paint is, so that I can't help you with. Uh -oh. But, um, you know, think of it all as, you know, don't think of them as separate elements. Think of it, you know, think of it all as a composition. In this case, I'm just, I'm, I kind of forgot, for, well, I forgot my background really because I was so focused on trying to create the, the creature. But really, uh, try to think of the whole composition. Micah says, uh, the more I look at this creature, the more he seems like a wise old village leader who is incredibly friendly, but will rip you apart if you threaten his family and friends. Yes. Reminds me of somebody I know. <laughs> who, me? <laughs> <laughs> well. <coughs> well. I've gotten a little angry in the past at certain <laughs> people that threaten my family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy says thanks to you and Travis I'm animating after a 22 year absence wow I'm 40 now thanks to all your inspiration 40 you gosh you're old <laughs> I wish I was 40 again I talked to my dad and he goes I wish I was 60 again I wish I was 70 again all right, Dad, I got it. Jim Jackson says, bandmate. Oh, yes. Jim and I were bandmates. Jim does an excellent Jagger, by the way. Oh, yeah, far better than me. <laughs> <laughs> far better than my sister. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? That cracked me up. Hi, I really love your art. I'm a little bit confused by that blue light that you're adding, though. Well, why blue? It's off screen, because, because watch. I will show you. Stay there. I'll, sh I'll show you. I will show you why I add blue. <laughs> Do not look, I will show you. Do not look, I will show you right here. It'll blend with them because I planned on putting some a blue tint to the background, so I wanted the source to be blue. Da, 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 da. Cleaning up some edges, 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 edges. All right. So now back to the background. Meanwhile, back in the background. With such a This is this brush here. Everyone asks me what it is, and this is one of my friend's brushes that I don't share because he made it. So I can't. I can't really sell it. I've got my other texture brushes, but um, uh, they're off in another folder because I updated my Photoshop, and the fault the brushes didn't update. Oh dear! Hello, Aaron. I've been watching your amazing How to Draw Wolf lessons and got a question. What should I do while watching it? Should I copy your drawing or should I draw my own wolves? Um, do what you feel comfortable doing. You can copy along, and I, I tend to copy when I learn because I um, I'll just I learn a little bit better that way. That's my own personal thing, though. Wow, that brush is really lagging. See how that blue all of a sudden changed? Now that I put blue in the background, that blue on his skin doesn't look blue anymore, does it? If you take my color and light course, you'll see how, how color affects the eye. I like that. And she, she just said, thank you so much for showing me. You are welcome. 
You are very welcome, man. Just adding some nice color. Color? Color? Come on. I'm, start, I'm getting a little nervous because it's, it's acting a little bit slow. Come on. Why is it doing this? Don't acting crap. a bit slow, is it? I don't want it to crap out on me. Watch this. My simple, simple cloud brush. Which way are we going? I'm going to go this way. Asking, why does it look green? <laughs> you mean your uncle? Yes, yeah, my uncle. <laughs> my I like how, I like how you always refer to him as my brother. <laughs> well, he is your brother. I know, I know, but he's your uncle. But why, why does it look green for him? Because he's colorblind. <laughs> yes, my brother Travis Blaze is red-green colorblind. What do you think? Is that too busy? Did I go too busy on those clouds? I did. That's why I did them on a different layer. I can redo them. Redo. Because it's ha ha ha. I always save when it gets slow because it usually. It's usually a sign of an impending crash. I was just going to say an impending crash. Also for your next stream, can you please draw something in dark light, uh, such as nighttime? Yes. Here's one. Watch, I'll show you. This is one if it was at night. Ready? Night. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it wouldn't be like that. <laughs> well, it's nighttime with a blindfold. Nighttime with a blindfold. Yeah, that's more like it. So there's our background. So now he's sitting a little better. <laughs> then he says, I'm always blown away by how it looks at, at the end. Uh, it always comes together at the end, doesn't it? That's the thing. You always always have faith in the process when you're creating your images. Our paintings always look t terrible at some point during the process of making them. Trust in the process of making them, knowing that they're going to come together quite nicely. Quite nice. I love it when a plan comes together. Yes. <laughs> so always, always trust in that process. Yeah. Uh, Austin thought the nighttime with a blindfold joke was pretty funny. <laughs> and Mark is quoting the two of us, me saying, he's your brother, and, and you saying, he's your uncle. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. What? <laughs> Bob's who? Who's Bob? You know, I'm going to take those off. Oops. Cancel. I'm going to take those highlights off of there. And rather than do... Whoops. See? I was drawing on the wrong layer. Drawing on the wrong layer, see? We're going to put a new layer. We're going to set that to overlay. And now we're going to 
do some more highlights, even Mar brighter highlights. Mariana Garcia uh, says, for, for my thesis project, I'm attempting to write and illustrate a tale of a fox and a bird, and it's really just a magnificent coincidence that you had your fox's course discounted and your bird course coming up soon. I can't thank you enough for the support in these difficult times, and you're definitely going to be in my thank you page. You are welcome. And thank you for putting me in your thank you page. I have an awesome quote from um, uh, Lion King. Scar is the monkey's uncle. <laughs> Who's the monkey? Who's the monkey? The monkey's in his uncle? <clears throat> Twitch question. Do you think you would have achieved the same success if you hadn't gone to an art school? No, I don't. But times were different back then. I would never, never, I never, I, I don't know. I mean, who's to say? I think I've always had the same drive. I don't know. I uh, I don't know that I would have ended up at Disney, which definitely set up a certain path for me. You take some acting classes while animating characters back at Disney. I did. We took a lot of improv classes. So that way you could understand. Uh, yeah, just be better actors. Because you know what animators are. Actors, Actors with pencils. Actors with pencils. Chi 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 chi. Come. Come. <laughs> Aren't funny. <laughs> Just you going chee 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 chee. Let me in the corner. Ka -ka. <laughs> I gotta do it. I can't help it. What? I gotta throw a shadow in here just to see what it looks like. Uh, I think we've already established that the ka ka and the tookie tookie don't work. <laughs> Name that movie. Evolution. Yes. Call, <laughs> call, the tookie tookie don't work. I was just, I was just went, oh my god, Dustin. Call, call. <laughs> <laughs> and Zunji asks, uh, if there were a modern day of nine old men, who might some of them be? Andreas, uh, uh, Glenn Keane, Andreas Jaza, Mark Hen, uh, 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 Nick, Nick, uh, Nick Raineri. Um, Don Bluth. Do you think yourself as one, one of them as well, or no. the older generation? I'm not. I'm not as good as those guys. <laughs> I just fake it. You just fake it. Yeah. <laughs> May says, uh, uh, "Ken Duncan." Oh, Ken Duncan for sure. Yep. Thank you. Oh, James Baxter. James Baxter is at the top of the list. 
if I could animate as well as anybody, it would be James Baxter. Ob you know, obviously, Glenn Keane as well, but James Baxter is just amazing. One of my idols. There, I had to do it. I couldn't help it. I know, it's my crutch. But I like it. I like having that temperature change in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to put this layer on top so that the, the reflected light still comes through. It'll come up to yeah, time. Nick is asking it to make it bigger on the stream on the screen. Yes, I know. They tend to work small on this big screen. Sorry, Nick. Yeah, because to you, it's it's I big, know, but to us, it's I small. know, I get it. I'm showing a size comparison right now to your set cam. How about Eric Goldberg, the animator genius? Oh yeah, genius? yes. Sorry, yep. I forgot Eric. Of course, Eric. That goes without saying, and I should have. I don't know why I forgot Eric. I wonder if, like, a few more generations down the road, eventually, there's going to be, like. The, like the nine old men tradition of almost like like a, a generation of like knightlyhood in Disney Disney form oh yeah yeah you know, let's uh, let's do one last thing here first of all we can I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna have anything coming out of his mouth I think it'll block too much of the face but I do want to uh Try some textures. Shana says, hello, Aaron and Dustin. Hello, Shana. And uh, Danny uh, asks, what do you think separates you from these guys? Even though I think a lot of people think you are one of the best. Oh, I don't know. I, it's, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, it's experience, really. All right, sorry, I'm going to do something real quick. May just said, Nick, 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 the Nick, 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 Nick. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to create some lizard skin, a dragon skin. Yeah, Manny replied to Dane, asking about what, because Dane was asking the what made you, uh, what separated you from the guys, and Manny wrote his haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Says Aaron is doing one more thing. Yeah. Who could have expected that? <laughs> <laughs> so then we'll take it like this. We'll double it up, and we'll go. Ooh, bring it down. I'll bring it down now. Yeah. And then we'll go one more thing. One more thing. He says. That's what Manny says. He says one more thing. One more thing. Jim uh, uh, Jochet says, Dang, came in late. Hey, Aaron, it does Damn, we're in a tight spot. Damn, we're in a tight spot. Love my hair. Uh, will you save the grunge texture? Mm, maybe. Okay, we'll do that. And then we're going to do this. Move that over here like this. Yes. 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 <laughs> there we go. And then we'll take this. There we go. And we'll go like this. There we go. There we go. There. All right. 
right, so now we've got all that. Now, I'm going to put that all into one layer. Okay, so we created some skin texture. It's a, it's a little, uh, let's just see if we can get it to work. Oh, doggone it, come on. There we go. All right, so let's take this kill. I'm going to drag it over here. Are you ever going to collaborate again with Disney? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question, dear bud. <laughs> it is a good question. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a little bit of texture. I don't think I want it that big. Or that small, I should say. And we're going to... Do this. Chain said, there we go indeed. <laughs> there we go. Yes, indeed. There All right, let's see here. We're going to warp it. You better work. We're going to okay. warp it. Michelle Howard says, you guys cracked me up. I was stressing today, totally relaxing, totally relaxed and feeling creative. Cheers, me lovelies from the UK. You are welcome. All right, we're warping. Warping. I think what I need to do is do little sections. I think I'm going to have to do that. Maybe someone asked you in another stream, but what did you think about the movie Klaus? I loved Klaus. How could you? I mean, it's that's a no-brainer there, right? Oh yeah. So, with that done, like that, let me see if I want to do something here. Let's see if this is going to work. Hi, Aaron. What uh, is your table angle? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's about, it's about 80 degrees, probably. Ish. Yeah, I think it's about, about 80 degrees. feel like it's sitting on there right? I don't think it does. Oh yeah, you got a good point there, Martin. It says, this is a strange live stream. Gabby didn't say hi to Aaron. <laughs> Gabby didn't arrive today. I guess not. Hey, Aron. Aron? <laughs> I, I just had to say it, because it's spelled as A-R-R-O-N. Erroneous. <laughs> oh. Hey, Aaron. Uh, doesn't it seem an annoying to answer some uh, same questions every time? Uh, like no, not all the time. It's annoying that Dustin asks the same ones over and over. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm kidding. I kid. I kid. <laughs> I no, I'm I not. Kid. Maybe I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> Aaron, doesn't it seem annoying to answer the same questions every time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is going to work. It might. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to my eraser, get my soft around. Have you ever been so impressed with an actor's voice work that you had to redo a scene to fit their expression? Uh, no. You know, we listen to the work uh, we listen to the, the voice acting first. The voice acting is always done first. So it's never a surprise. I'm just going to lightly hit this. Oh. Imagine Disney says they're, they're gearing up their 2D feature animation division again. But better than ever. And they want you to and they want to put you in charge. Would you do it? No. Not in charge, no. Not in a million years. But I would 
definitely be intrigued enough to join up. Uh, how did Travis Blaze get into animation? Uh, he followed me. I went in first, and then Travis went in after me. Let's see if this is going to work. Kind of not liking it. I think it would look great if you liquidified the mesh," said uh, Lucas. Yeah, it's just I thought I was I was to be honest with you, I was trying to do a uh, I was trying to do a uh, a shortcut, and the shortcut just didn't work. Shortcut's gone. Yeah, and we got to finish this up because we're going way late. Three thirty-five. Yeah, let me do this. I got a, a quicker idea. I guess you're going to turn to nighttime with blindfold. <laughs> I wonder if we should do that the next year's April Fools. Do what? Like for next year April Fools, like we do an art piece like this, and then like, right, we're going to add one final detail, and it's just you just turn it all black. <laughs> like now it's nighttime with blindfold, and that that's the RP. So, all right, we're done with it, and you post it like that. <laughs> uh, do you know Ed Hooks? And if so, what do you think of his acting for Animators Theory? I don't know. I don't know that. Well, why I know of him, but I don't know his theory. A follow up of the new animation division thing. Why wouldn't you be in charge of a new div animation division? In Disney. Why wouldn't I? Because that's, that's too much responsibility that I just don't want to deal with. You know, to be the head of the division means you're not doing a lot of art. I like, I love what I'm doing right now. I love it. Now, they asked you to uh, come on board as a film director. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd consider that for sure. See, these can, these can go on and on and on and on. Mark Mar Berg's asking, Hi, Aaron. What did you do a course on how to do voice recognition technology <laughs> in our lift? Yeah, I was wondering Scotland. when that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's just hitting a couple of details. Welcome to Scotland. <laughs> and uh, Austin just replied to him saying, Eleven! <laughs> All right. Time Eleven. to wrap this up. Let's do this. Oh, thanks, Shane. She says, I love you. Let me do what you do and love watching. <laughs> how do you pick your reference images and how do you use them? Um, I just, I, that's a broad question. I pick whatever gives me the information that I need and then, uh, and then I, you know, try to put myself into them. I try not to use my reference images verbatim. But once again, uh, before we sign off, I just want to remind you guys that we've got some, you know, animation, a free animation course over on my website. We've, you know, we've made in response for the, the virus, we want you guys learning. And uh, so go over and check out creatureartteacher.com. Uh, we've got $1 brush packs. My Photoshop brushes are all just $1 for a pack. And, uh, Uh, we've got courses that are a dollar. We've got courses that are 40% off. We've got a lot of great stuff. And uh, just go on over and check it out, mate. Have you used the regular Wacom Cintiq or just the Pro? I'm looking at getting one, but the Pro is super expensive. Yeah, I've, I've used um, 
Yes, and I love it. I've used both of them. And for, I'm not sure what you're looking to use it for, but um, it, 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 the regular one is fine. There. Just adding a couple little details here. You should put your stream drawings in your print shop. Pretty please. I think we've actually talked about that before. Yeah. Chase says, I've been learning. I'm on the monthly subscription. Oh, right on. Kirk Michael says, wow, we great drawing, Aaron. <laughs> Thanks, man. Wow, we. Uh, Stephen Marshall says, "Would you do another quick animation demo on Facebook? Uh, you make it so easy uh, when I follow along with you." Yes, we will do that. Just kind of roughing up some of it here and there. Here, there, everywhere. Everywhere, uh huh. Flyers and tigers and bears, oh my. Oh boy. You see, I've got a nice little dry brush for texture here. There. There we go. Do you know Carl Kopinski? I don't. I don't know Carl Kopinski. Carl? Alright, gonna finish up here. Sorry, I'm kind of trying to race to get finished. I've got to do a, another... I've got to do a... a a live stream with Tony Bancroft's animation class today. What gave you this idea? You what guys was? did for the <laughs> for this court for this painting. Yeah, it was recommendation day. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was request day. Request day. That's it. You can do the animation demo at night with a blindfold on. <laughs> I'm just brightening up a couple of areas here. Dustin, when do you start doing voices? I <laughs> imagine Aaron laughing all the time when you were a kid, running around the house talking like Duff, Duffy Duck. I mean, Daffy Duffy Duck, Duck. I start doing... Well, I think I've done voices for as long as I can remember. I just haven't done... You've always been pretty good at them, yeah. Yeah, I mainly did like the voice impersonations... You okay. A good couple of years ago. I think I started like back in high school mostly. Yeah. But I did like sound effects a lot uh, growing up. Yes, you did. One mm -hmm. of my favorites was the police siren. <laughs> yeah. I used to be able to do it with my voice, but now nowadays I do it by whistling, but You were good at it. Ah, uh, thank you. And nowadays is a lot of the voices and usually it's like I'll watch a show or a movie and I watch it enough times for me to recite the line and say it in their voice sometimes. Like, Joyce, get away! <laughs> Rabbit season! gonna soften some edges here and then we're done so there's our purple eagle dragon Egon Kirk 
Kirk Bunk says, Aaron, I know you're not keen on The Mandalorian, but I gotta say, I think it's great. It's I know awesome. it's. I know there's not much story arc, but I like how it's short and sweet and full of Star Wars goodies. I do agree with you there. I'm. I personally love the movie because of the te- the technology they used for filming it. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Because that because because uh, I showed you the behind the scenes stuff, and some of this and a lot of the shots they took um, was not even green screened, and yeah. that's the crazy part. I mean, there was some blue screen here and there for, like, the bigger, bigger shots, but, yeah, yeah, a lot of it was really cool tech. Did you ever use Dustin as a reference for one of your words for, like, for animation or drawing? Did I ever use you for what? As a, as reference for, for maybe, like, a concept art or maybe for animation. Uh, you had big eyes. I always looked at your eyes as for uh, for uh, inspiration. Your sister was a big inf- uh, big inspiration for Nala. Well, there was also that one character that you drew that was based on on my persona of a of a gamer for. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, for art of uh, what was it art? Art paint? story. Art story. Yep. It was a little kid with curl with curly hair with the head with the headset on. <laughs> Yeah, with this weird-looking gaming controller. <laughs> I made it up. <laughs> it's an interesting-looking design. It's like, <laughs> and Marburger says those flesh paddles look awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm just gonna. I'm just noodling it at this point. So thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you had a good time today. That was a long one. Boy, we don't usually go that long. But I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, uh, what is the large oval brush you usually use to cover large surfaces? I can't find it in any of your brush packs. And I think I've purchased all of them. Yeah, that's a, that's a custom brush a friend of mine gave me that I don't have for sale because it's one of his brushes. I use that every once in a while. I've made other texture brushes, but I don't have them loaded right now. So I, use, I, I fall back on that one. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, uh, bought a few of your courses, including your new lighting one. You're an amazing teacher. Oh, thank you. So here's our guy. This is our image for the day. The eagle dragon. The eagle That's dragon. a weird one. And he's purple. The request, most people were asking for him to be purple. So we made him purple. <laughs> but it was fun. Probably do some more on it. But uh, once again, remember, we've got that big sale going on over at Creature Art Teacher. And uh, we'd love for you to pick up some stuff and start teaching yourself and do yourself some good while you're sitting at home, socially distancing yourself from everybody. Uh, Keep up the faith. We're going to get through this and um, everything will go back to normal very soon. Uh, But until then, do some drawing, do some painting and uh, put some beauty back into the world because that's what we do as artists. We need to do that more and more, especially nowadays. So uh, I hope you guys had a great time today. I certainly did. And I will talk to you again on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. That's when we're going to be doing our next stream. And we will talk to you then. So I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe. Like I said, put some beauty back into the world. And I'll talk to you next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if you're interested in any wildlife photography, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze. And again, that's Dustin underscore Blaze. And uh, we also got some uh, wildlife reference packs coming out soon. Keep up. For, uh, we'll keep you updated with that in the future. And Austin, do your best, Jagger. And <laughs> see you guys next week. And until then, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.